Hey there, Sanka, everybody. Welcome back for another amazing episode of the Marhaba Crypto Show. As always, uh, we have Moby with us. Moby, how's your day going? What's going on? Are the kangaroos hopping? What's what's up? Yeah, man, really well. I'm really, really good. Um, you have to apologize me today, Ahmed, because like I'm looking up, looking down. My my rabbit bit through my webcam, so I'm using my laptop's um uh my laptop's my uh, uh sorry camera. So you'll have to excuse me if I look rude and I show everyone my nostrils. But yeah, really excited. I was really happy yesterday. I woke up. I saw 2,000 uh, followers on the YouTube channel. So that's really, really exciting. Um, so yeah, big yeah. thank you to everyone who's supporting us. And um, yeah, just, uh, you know, we're here to deliver you value. And uh, we can't wait to keep uh, delivering you value. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's more than 2,000 now. I think we're around 3,000 now. No. Wait, 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 you said your rabbit, your rabbit bit, bit your wire? Uh, you have a rabbit? You never told me. Yeah, I have my son has a rabbit. Uh, it is okay. the most odd. I wish I never bought this thing. I really regret buying it. This thing bites hey. me. It's not a lot of fun. I took my. I went to the pet store. They said take it to the vet, and I'm like, do you understand if I take it to the vet, what my cousins will do? It's like, because in Pakistan, like these things are poultry. It's livestock. So it's like taking your chicken to the vet. Like they'll laugh at me. I can't yeah. take my rabbit to the vet, man. <laughs> but my son won't let me cook him. But alhamdulillah, man. I digress. But yeah, it's all good. <laughs> oh man, do you know uh, when I was when I was a lot younger, I, I I wanted a rabbit at one point, but I think I kind of grew out of it. I don't think I can have pets; it's just not my thing. But I think <laughs> we can talk about pets all day long. I think we'll make a different episode on that if you're really interested in that. One hundred percent. But I think people are more excited to know what's going on with Marhaba, what's going on with the crypto world and the crypto market. So Moby, the floor is yours. Let us know what's going on with crypto. All right. Okay. So what's going on with crypto? I think to talk about what's going on with crypto, we have to talk about what's going on in the world right now. So uh, mm-hmm. inflation, like figures released just a couple of days ago, actually, as a recording, inflation has hit a, uh, what is it? A 6 point something percent, a 6.2% yep. level in October, year on year. So if I go back and share my actually screen, I'll go back here. Uh, yeah, so inflation, like looking at here from article from Forbes, and this happened, of course, it happened in the same day, a couple of days ago, we hit $69,000 on Bitcoin, right? So we hit our all-time mm-hmm. high. That was uh, moments after, uh, you know, the Labor Department of the US, you know, mentioned that you know, consumer prices rose 6.2%, uh, which is the most since December 1990, a year that you probably weren't even born, Ahmed, um, and a lot more than uh, economists were predicting. So, like. I want you guys to think about it this way, right? You know, if you had uh, a year ago, you had $100 in your bank account, it would now be worth $94, under $94. If you had $100, so it's gone down 6%. If you had $100 in Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin in that same period has gone up 370%. So it'd be worth like, you know, what, $400 right now. So when everyone yeah. says that Bitcoin is a hedge against inflation, that's what they mean. When they say it's like the long-term asset, that's what they mean. So of course, you know, we yeah. all like to t- follow, you know, the Solanas and, you know, people like following Doge, whatever you want. Awesome. Fine. Right. But at the end of the day, Bitcoin is that standard. Bitcoin is the gold standard, you know, the, the North Star by which the crypto mollo, uh, market follows. And if you have money yeah. that you don't, you know, you're not scared that you need in a hurry, your lifetime savings, you got to put it in there. You know, my, my own kids, my kids have about $1,100 worth of crypto. And a big part of that oh, wow. is, a big part of that is Bitcoin. And yesterday I had a look because we hadn't had a look in months and months. And they bought in the peak. They bought in the peak just before we crashed in May. And I said, guys, you guys mm-hmm. put in like, you know, $700. So even at the, like yeah. at that young age, I'm trying to teach them like guys, like, you know, and they're like, it started clicking in their head. I'm like, you exactly. don't, you, you should, kids are kids, right? But this is honestly a lesson for us. Like the money that you make, a lot of that you should put towards investing and then the stuff that you need to live on, whatever. And then the money that your mm-hmm. money makes, look at using that for, you know, your bags, your shoes, your watches, your whatever you sort of want to buy. So that's the way smart people think. So short of this becoming an investment advice, because it's not, um, you know, that's why Bitcoin is Bitcoin. You know, but your thoughts on that, Ahmed, before mm-hmm. I move forward? Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, this is huge. Uh, I was just watching um, pl- uh, politics and stuff from different countries the other day. They were talking about the concept of inflation and how 
Uh, it's affecting consumer prices and everything. And I mean, we're looking at, we're feeling this on a day-to-day basis. Like, I remember when I used to go out buy stuff, and I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to bring it to a practical. Like these numbers, a lot of some people don't understand what they mean. But I'm saying when you go out to do groceries, you'll see the price differences. You'll feel them while buying stuff because you're like, I bought the same stuff about let's say it was six, seven, eight months ago, and they're like much cheaper, uh, or at least a good percentage cheaper. And so this is where we have to start understanding where uh, where we are right now with global economics and finance and, and the reserve systems and micro macroeconomics versus where we're going. And that's where the whole concept of DeFi, crypto, Bitcoin, 100%. and all these things come in place. And if you don't start looking forward and working our way backwards from that, from that point, we will not uh, be able to make good decisions. The reason why Moby was able to give his kids a portfolio was because he looked forward and he knows what the future is going to hold potentially and he's working back for succeed success for his uh for his kids i have an, another uncle that did the exact same actually and um he uh his kids right now have a huge portfolio so um totally understandable i know exactly where you're going with this and uh, i'm pretty happy to hear that to be honest yeah and, and they just get it now like in the funny in the start it was just like oh you know my daughter loves unicorns and so she'll buy uniswap and you know my son he, he he's uh He's a true humanitarian type of kid, right? He loves helping people. And so he wanted Cardano because of Africa or whatever. But yeah, like that's oh, you know, okay. the penny's dropping already, right? So there's no excuses for us. Um, going back mm-hmm. to sort of Bitcoin and like, okay, so let's talk about price action, right? Let's talk about what's happening on the price side. Now, if uh, this is something we, we shared with you guys like three weeks ago, right? These channels. Oop, I've just lost that chart. Let me go back to it. Uh, we spoke about these channels, these buy zones uh, for Bitcoin, and um, it, it, we're still in that really, really bullish buy zone right now. So, like, I've got this channel here between what is it? Between sixty thousand, sixty-four thousand. Really, what I sort of wanted to say is, if we can keep above this channel, between this channel, the sixty-five and sixty k channel, like we said in in the past, you know, the the bigger the base, the the higher the trajectory, the trajectory into space. It is really, really good. You'll notice a lot of good coins do this. You know, Solana did this, it hovered around 200 and then it just broke out. So this is really bullish stuff. The other thing I want to re- just to get a little bit intermediate with you guys, if I can uh, show you these moving averages. Now, I know there's a lot happening on my screen, so I'm just going to hide all my indicators. If I hide all my drawings, sorry. Um, there's, there's these moving averages, right? So in, in trading, they, they do this a lot in stocks as well. They talk about these moving averages. You have a 50-day moving average, 100. I mean, you can have any day, but 50, 100, 200, very, very common. And can you see? You can see here, like Bitcoin is well above the 50, 100, 200-day uh, moving average, and essentially that is considered bullish. That's a general textbook technical rule. If you're above the 50-day moving average, it's generally bullish. And a buy entry is often if it bounces, so if it goes all the way down and it bounces off that 50-day moving average, that is a good buy opportunity. But that bounce, if it dropped today, is 56, 57,000, which coincides with a support level a lot of people talk about. So these things are interesting. I, we don't need anyone to be a, a trader. You don't have to be, be an expert on this, but just understanding the market is really, really important. Um, now, just to kind of uh, keep things a little bit simpler, there's a guy that some of you guys might know called Clan B. He came up with the stock to flow model. And essentially, it looks at predictions of the Bitcoin price dependent on the stock, right? And uh, he's been touted a lot in a lot of, you know, crypto channels, media channels, whatnot, because he's really, really accurate. He's really, really accurate. And his stock to flow model currently predicts a $100,000 Bitcoin price. Uh, in December, but that's quite conservative. He's actually sort of looking at between 100 and 135 thousand dollars. So, not financial advice. A model is right until it's wrong, obviously. But just looking at the flow, looking at like the inventory of Bitcoin on exchanges, uh, looking at the fact where every time we get a little dip, you know, institutional buyers are there to gobble it up is really, really bullish. Um, so, moving off onto that, I want to talk uh, a little bit about Solana, right? My second favorite crypto and i'm really really excited about this one ahmed because um we had the uh, solana breakpoint conference i'll go back to um just our faces again for a moment we had the solana breakpoint uh, conference right in lisbon portugal 
And essentially that was like a three day okay. conference and they had people from DeFi there, people from uh, like AR there and just like insane amount of geeky talent <laughs> in the room, right? And anyway, it was a three-day mm-hmm. conference. I do not have time to watch, you know, the three-day conference. But I want to talk about a couple of, like, really, really bullish things that sort of came out of it. Um, now, the first mm-hmm. thing was is um, we had uh, – there was a, a mob called Neon Labs, right? And they raised $40 million to bring EMV functionality to Solana. Okay, so mm-hmm. what, right? Sounds like a lot of money. I really kind of want to harp on why this is so bullish for Solana. This could lead to implementations of popular DeFi protocols on the blockchain, including things like Aave. Now, Ahmed, why did Ethereum make so much money? Why is Ethereum has like go from 200 to 2000? It's because of the money, right? It's because of the money. It's because mm-hmm. of DeFi. It's because of smart contracts. It's because of mm-hmm. things like Aave. So the fact now that you have these, you know, companies or these these protocols like Neon Labs trying to raise forty million dollars to almost kind of port over things like Aave, traditionally Ethereum protocols, onto Solana, that's really, really bullish. You know, like that's why we're in DeFi right now, Ahmed, right? So that is, that's mm-hmm. huge for Solana. Your thoughts, comments? Yeah, I mean, um, if it's in the same footsteps, then you know it's going to have a similar reaction. But I think it's going to be better than uh, Ethereum, if you ask me. You know, the potential percentage return. Uh, because potential, Ethereum yeah. Yeah, Ethereum has a specific development type, and, and, and you can do so much on it. Uh, but you can do more with Solano, with cheaper gas fees. So, you know, if they were the same, to, if they were the same product, and, you know, then Solano is just another solution. But I think with Solano bringing in this extra edge and extra aspects in it. I think there's more to it than just, a, uh, you know, than, than Ethereum. And yes, Ethereum is the first in its kind, but that doesn't mean it's going to be, the, be you know, the same, like it's, it's going to hold the value for the longest run because all the new developments will start considering the aspect of, oh, okay, well, Ethereum is such, uh, has such high gas fees. It, it, it's limited to these things, but Solano isn't, but XYZ isn't. So that we can start developing on it, and I was gonna, I was gonna say Cardano, but then you, I know you're gonna, you're gonna kill me for saying Cardano. Talk about Cardano, but um, no, no, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, no, I agree with you. I agree with you in that regards that um, it brings better value, and uh, due to its potential, I think the potential market return over time would be higher. And plus, Ethereum's already mature, right? Yeah, People absolutely. Have, it's already being accepted in society. Solano's next. So when something is new and upbringing, that curve is a lot more steep and that steep is what where the value comes from. If you look at wealth and, and finance. So Absolutely. That's my and, little few points. And, and there's, there's two things I, I, I want to talk a little bit about technical. So technicals, of course, guys, for those of you uh, who are new to crypto or new to the show, is price action, level, support, resistance. But, you know, if you're, for most people, uh, you know, being a value investor, looking at the fundamentals is the most important mm-hmm. thing. So, um, you know, going back to the fundamentals of Solana, again, I could do an entire show on why this is so sort of bullish. But just uh, red, the Red Panda Squad, uh, one of my favorite NFTs, you should definitely check them out, shout out to them. Um, they did a really good sort of summary. They shared this really good summary in terms of, some key things that came out of, you know, the cliff notes that came out of Breakpoint. So, of course, we had the Neon Lab thing. Um, the second big thing was the Brave browser will integrate Solana ecosystem by default. Now, what is Brave? Mm-hmm. Brave is a, a, a browser that is used huge by crypto nerds, by crypto geeks, uh, but not only th- those people, also like privacy-focused people as well, uh, people who use DuckDuckGo instead of Google. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's huge. That that's that kind of like, it's a very, very strong growing, um, I guess, niche, of, not even niche anymore, segment of users. And if you don't believe me, you just have to turn on the news and you know, look at all the anti-vaxxers, right, who are paranoid about every bloody microchip and magnet in the country. But uh, uh, again, I'm not trying to be political here, <laughs> but the point is, you know, there's a huge segment of people that worry about that. Now, why is this bullish? Well, the Brave browser is going to have the Solana system by default, not Ethereum, not Bitcoin, not anything else. The default mode of transacting on Brave will be Solana. Mm -hmm. 
huge, absolutely mm-hmm. huge. Um, analytics platform mm-hmm. Nansen will launch Solana dashboards. Uh, fine. This the next one is very exciting too. Reddit co-founder uh, is partnering. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Reddit is partnering with Solana as well, and they're committing a hundred million dollars so again in the era of privacy and I guess you know protection and not wanting to be tracked. Uh, Reddit and Solana co- uh, combining to do a hundred million dollar fund to grow decentralized social media. In the world of tech, if you wow. throw enough money at something and you have the right people and the right value prop, it generally seems to work. So huge, mm-hmm. huge, huge news. And it's being pushed by Solana. Uh, Phantom Mobile mm-hmm. Wallet. So the Phantom Wallet is uh, their, Solana's answer to MetaMask. Um, if you used it, Armored, before, I think you have. It is beautiful. UX, again, I'm a marketer by sort of trade. So anything with good user experience, anything that focuses on the consumer gets me very excited. It is a beautiful, beautiful uh, wallet to use, and it hasn't even hit mobile yet. People are still using this thing on desktop, yeah. so that's coming. Yeah. And in the final piece of news, Fract fractionalized the first NFT on Solana. So Fract is, uh, they've already done this in Ethereum, but now they're fractionalizing NFTs on Solana. So if you buy a DGen mm-hmm. Ape on Solana, uh, you could fractionalize it into little pieces and I guess offer it up. That one I'm not so excited about because like uh, it's still growing. Uh, most of my NFTs I buy on Solana, I buy on Solana because of no gas fees, but they aren't mm-hmm. as valuable yet as Ethereum. But again, that is sort of a side. They're doing some amazing things. They're, they're looking at uh, this stuff that I can't even talk about today that I don't have time, like having NFTs and streaming video through NFTs. Uh, JPEGs mm-hmm. are just the start, but really bullish, really bullish stuff, Ahmed. Um, so I, I did start on um, fundamentals, but I do want to talk about technicals uh, at the same time because I know people are thinking about, well, is this thing too late? Have I missed the boat with Solana? You know, what's the next Solana? Well, um, if you're mm-hmm. looking for an entry, not financial advice, $230 is not a bad area. So I've got this he, uh, mm-hmm. today I purposely focus on day charts, not four hour charts. Cause I want people to like, and four out the four hour chart on trading view is it's a really, uh, four hours is really good. It's a good kind of mix between long-term short-term, but I want to focus on, you know, the daily chart right now. We're seeing really decent resistance. I oh, sorry, a support at $230. So it's kind of bounced off this. And if you were looking for an entry point, um, what, what traders do, they don't necessarily just kind of look for a level to be hit. They look for a level to be bounced off of. So if you guys can kind of sort of see my chart here, you can sort of see that it, it went past, it went really sort of past two, 230. Now it's on 230. Uh, and what a, a, a trader will do is wait till it kind of breaks out. So they'll actually buy it a little bit higher. So the, that should tell you mm-hmm. another thing too. Like they're not even trying to top, time tops and bottoms. They don't even bother. Mm-hmm. They look for sort of breakouts and they look for confirmations on trend lines. So we do have that support there at 230. There is another support line that I drew a while ago. And I think what's that? That's at about uh, 214. Uh, then of course, you know, 200, mm-hmm. you know, the psychological levels are very, very strong. Now, um, what, again, like I said, what you might want to do is wait till it bounces off. But that's not what I've been doing. <laughs> I haven't been doing that at all. That's the textbook way. What I've been doing is actually using my yield farming profits and my take profits from coins like Alluvium and Luna. And I've been buying Solana every chance I get, Ahmed, because I'm so bullish on this thing. Mm-hmm. I don't say, I don't think you should do it too, because everyone's like risk lot tolerance and level is different. I can do it because I bought most of my Solana at $50. So my average cost is mm-hmm. still going quite low. The other thing too that I want people mm-hmm. to kind of take out of that is if you really believe in a coin, right? People do this with Bitcoin all the time. They take profits, they put it in Bitcoin. It's a hedge, right? But if you really believe in a coin and it's overpriced, you can almost kind of all, almost buy it at any time. But I'm not using my money. I'm not using my earned income. Um, whatever my yield farming yeah. is earning, uh, whatever, you know, if I hit yeah. my take profits levels, I'm using that to buy this thing because um, mm-hmm. – I I I, th- I, just, I really think Solana is one of those coins that's on a wire right now. It hit 260, 270. I think it's still going to go. Mm-hmm. I do believe it's the Ethereum of, of 2017. Uh, but again, not financial advice. You have to do things based on your risk tolerance, what entry point you exactly. got in and that type of thing. And, 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 and as always, we say, you know, do your research, right? See if you're confident. Always, any decision you take in life, this is like not even just financial stuff. It's just, you gotta make your own decision and you gotta be confident in that decision because if you're not confident in that decision, you're always gonna double think yourself and potentially make a wrong 
decision in the long run. For example, you can be like, I like this investment opportunity a lot. It could be real estate, it could be crypto, it could be stocks, it could be whatever, gold mine, whatever. And then you can invest in it and then you know all of a sudden it goes down a little bit and then you can panic and sell it and then all of a sudden it booms up like 30, 40%. And because mm. you weren't confident in it, you double thought yourself and you lost an opportunity that you knew you were going to get at a 40, uh, to, sorry, at a 70, 80% that you were confident in. But because you weren't fully confident, you kind of lost that. So I see this a lot uh, because I, I, I meet a lot of people who, you know, day trade or people who have been investing or people who have always come to me and say, oh, no, trading and in, uh, investments are haram. And because you, you, you can lose all your money. I'm like, well, how educated are you in it? How long did you research on these products? Did you just go off of a uh, influencer online that said buy, buy this, buy, do that? I'm like, you know, these influencers are heavily uh, sponsored for these type of things. Uh, not all the time, not all the time, but uh, sometimes for sure. So be careful and you know, do your research and be confident in your decision. Hundred percent, hundred percent, Ahmed. That that's the thing, right? The thing too, like you know, uh, you know, like a lot of tips I get from friends uh tips <laughs> i get from friends they'll be like i saw i saw someone on tiktok not uh, not amajawa because amajawa on tiktok is the real deal you got to follow amajawa you want some quick snackable content there but like i got this tip or that tip. the the thing you got to realize is tiktok's algorithm it, it's designed to uh, focus on and i'm this is the marketing me speaking now it's designed to like reward pattern interrupt videos right so things that interrupt mm. the pattern things that interrupt the news mm. feed or the, or, you know, the stream or whatever it is. So to do that, people need to sensationalize. They'll be like, Oh, the one coin that's going to make you rich or you better stop. You know, like if you, if you thought sheep mm-hmm. was the next big thing, you better stop. They need to sensationalize, you know, kind of like the, the media yeah. formula. Of moon cat or something. <laughs> exactly. Cat moon or something. Exactly. You cannot, you cannot yeah, give definitely. financial advice in 15 seconds to a minute. You can't do it. It's yep. bullshit. So it doesn't the exist. most, the, the 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 one step you should do is if you think it's interesting and it tickles your fancy, just add it to your short list. Just add it to your watch list. Yeah. That's it. Just add it to your watch yeah. list. Watch it. Track it. Right. It's like Ahmed says. Yeah. You know, I've been quoting Ahmed last couple of weeks. You know, to my friends because I I was saying to Ahmed before. Uh, I said, dude, you know, you got to check out this NFT. You know, you've been uh, complaining. I don't share NFTs with you. Then you don't buy them. And you said to me something, you said, look, you know what? I've realized, you know, opportunities are like buses. There's always another one coming, right? So you got to keep that type of advice and realize there's always opportunities coming. But anyway, I digress. Yeah. Let, yeah. let me sort of keep going so we can keep this this uh, show on point. You know, you know, I, you, you guys know I like mm-hmm. to talk. Uh, but what I want to kind of talk about now is, you know, like what if you have Miss Solana or you feel like you have Miss Solana? You haven't bought it at $50, $60, $100. Mm-hmm. You haven't bought a nickel of it. But you know, you know, this is really good, and you're looking to, I guess, hedge your risk tolerance a little bit, or, or manage your risk tolerance. That's very, very normal. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of coins out there that I think are phenomenal, like near near protocol. But I didn't get in when I wanted to, um, you know. So I, I'm looking at these levels. So I want to talk to you guys about that, right? So if you mm-hmm. feel like you miss Solana, what is the next Solana? Is there the next line? Is something sort of coming? Because when you look at it, and mm-hmm. I'll go back to my screen here. When you look at the market cap of Solana, uh, where are we here? Market cap of Solana, we are $70 billion, right? $70 billion. So this is the thing. Mm-hmm. For this thing to go to 500, you need to realize that there needs to be another $70 billion to enter the market. That's a lot of freaking mm-hmm. money. That's a lot of money. Market yeah. cap of crypto is only just under three trillion. So when people look at things like Sheeb, you go ahead, Amit. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is Solano fully vested, or is there still some tokens? Uh, are like are they fully released all their tokens, their entire um, supply, or are they holding some back? No, I don't. I don't think it is. And this is one of the criticisms of Solana. There's pros and cons with everything, mm-hmm. right? They talk about the crypto yeah. trilemma. You can have speed, security, decentralization, but only two of them. So this is kind of one yeah. of the one of the uh, criticisms of you know Solana. So I don't believe like the circulating supply right now is three three hundred and two billion. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that and max supply. Yeah, there isn't a max supply right now. So the total supply is oh, five hundred and eight. Yeah. So you honestly, billion. you honestly never know what the what the price could be. Like I mean, it's not that you never know, but it's understanding that at any time. They can also invest new tokens, and then the supply goes up. Well, the market cap is still there. 
when you do the division, the price will go a little bit lower, actually. So exactly, because, exactly. I mean, they haven't done anything like that yet, but I'm saying there's also that aspect, you know, because I hear all this, this all the time. Hey, if Shiba hits a dollar, um, let's have a reality check here, guys. <laughs> uh, so it's like understanding the market cap, understanding supply, how that all works and how, how that affects the prices. And oh, the it's, so it's, it's so important. It's so it's so important. And you beat yeah. me to it. Ditto. I was going to say that like Shiba's like 0.0001. So the appeal of it, like we spoke about this a few weeks ago, like, you know, um, oh, speculative yeah. excess is very good for innovation. Uh -huh. It's bringing people into crypto. That's that's great. But like 0 0.001, they don't realize for that to hit a dollar, or if it just hits a dollar, if it just hits a cent, you need to realize like all those zeros are money. It's market cap. Yeah. All that needs to be invested. So there is no way, there is no way on earth, right, that like SHIB is going to be number one. This is not going to happen. It's like, like there's a very few Moving guarantees, but I can sit here and promise you she no. is not going to be number one. It can't happen. Moby, like, if you want next week, sorry, I know I'm cutting you off next week. I can actually step-by-step step guide people on how they can make a cryptocurrency and how they can pump it to the point. I mean, it's not good. I shouldn't be teaching people how to do this because they can do it and they can get super rich unethically and then run away with money. But if you guys want, it's not that difficult to make a, a very simple, basic BS token um it's pretty Binance much a copy chain. paste oh you mean bullshit you mean bullshit not finance smart chain <laughs> yeah 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 exactly uh exactly not Binance smart Binance smart chain like if you're making a good product it's difficult there's a lot of codes and there's a lot of contracts and all this stuff but if you're just making a simple an exact copy of shiba it's a copy and paste technically speaking run some servers behind it then you pay a lot of money to influencers that's it you pump and then you you throw down your percentages like all all that you own from that allocation and that's it you run away no one's gonna catch you it's a decentralized market unfortunately but that's what it is I mean fortunately and unfortunately I mean there's gives and backs on uh, goods and bad on this but I'm trying to explain to people that be careful right and so that's the, the other side okay awesome so yeah no, absolutely right so back into in terms of like like I said what is the next Solana right so Earlier, I spoke about following the money, right? Following sort of DeFi, like let's follow the money. Now, I want to kind of draw your eye to, uh, just on that that uh, point, draw your eye to DeFi Llama. So what's DeFi Llama? DeFi Llama, it tracks amongst a lot of other things, the amount of money that is locked, right? So TVL, the amount of money that's locked into chains. And of course, no surprises here, you can see Ethereum, the amount of total value locked, is $179 billion. Awesome. So how does this sort of link to Solana and link to the next big Solana? Well, let's kind of look down the list, right? You've got Solana here at 14 billion. All right. So when I kind of sort of break that down, you look at something like Ethereum. This is Ethereum here. You can see what we've sort of done. And in the last month, Ethereum has, has had an improvement of 26% in terms of total value locked. Okay. Awesome. All right. So that's, if you kind of look at that figure, 180 billion. Let's look at Solana. Solana has 14 billion, right? So 14 billion. It's a, a declined a little bit, but you know it is what it is. And in the last month, it's increased by 19.55 percent. But what's what's the kind of next up and coming one? Well, I want to introduce you guys to Avax, right? Avax. If so, Solana's 14 billion. Avax is 11 billion, and not. You know, not not you know twenty six. Um, uh, uh, sorry, not not nineteen percent improvement like Solana. You're looking at more mm -hmm. like um twenty three percent in one month, right? So now think about that, right? In the one month, we've had more total value locked, eleven billion compared to fourteen billion. It's quite close. Let me go back to Coin Market Cap. You go all the way down, and you see here, Avax is sitting at a market cap of eighteen million right? So less than a third. Mm -hmm. So if you were looking for space to grow, if you're looking for something with strong fundamentals and price action, AVAX could be it, not financial advice, because it, again, following the money, if I, and I won't do this, but if you kind of look at the top 10 coins, you look at, you know, Bitcoin, money, Ethereum, ultrasound money, Binance Smart Chain, TVL, the second most after, right? Number four is USDT, money. So you got to follow the money. Unfortunately, money makes the world go around. So for that reason, I'm very, very bullish on AVAX. I think it could be the next. If if Solana is Ethereum, 
AVAX could be Solana, right? I'm on this website now called Trader Joe. So a bit of a, again, not a tip, not financial advice, you know, maybe added to your watch list. What's Trader Joe? Trader Joe is their version, AVAX's version of Uniswap. One thing you need to realize is with these protocols, any protocol, AVAX, Solana, Ethereum, there's always one number one place, a DEX, right? There's one sort of premier place that winner takes all, right? And Mm -hmm. at the moment, it seems to be Trader Joe. Like this is the place where you can do uh, trading, you can swap one coin to another coin, you can pull, farm, yield. And, you know, Ahmed, when you check this out later, you'll notice this thing, it reminds you of Minecraft. So again, user yeah, I, experience. I, I quickly did a Google search and I, I can see exactly what you're talking about. It, it's fun, right? I'm a little bit too old for Minecraft, you know, <laughs> but like there's a whole generation. The thing is like these guys have exactly. a vibe, they have a feel, you know, it's not like Binance, which is just kind of like, you know, just throw a whole bunch of money. And the other thing too, like this is something like, you know, tra- so Trader Joe, again, think about Trader Joe as being like the Uniswap for AVAX. Um, it's the premier mm-hmm. DEX, UX is great, VCs like Defiance Capitals and Three uh, three Arrows Capital, you guys can look them up and see what they've invested in. And even their mm-hmm. meme coin has utility. So they have a meme coin called Tractor Joe, and it's really, really fun, it's like this cartoon guy. I don't really care about that. The point is, is when you buy Tractor Joe, they take, uh, I think two or 3%, sorry, a 2% fee, they use that to buy mm-hmm. Trader Joe, and then they burn Trader Joe. So I know that's getting a little bit confusing, mm. but just to kind of like, you know, sh- sh- like give you the hierarchy, you've got AVAX, then you've got Trader Joe, which is like the Uniswap. They have their own meme coin called Tractor Joe. If people buy Tractor Joe, they buy Trader Joe and burn those coins. So it's like built in sort of burn mechanism there. But anyway, that's the market update. There's a couple of tips for you there. You know, I've spoken about how bullish Solana is. I think there's enough there for you guys uh-huh. to go research and look it up. Uh, but uh, Ahmed, over to you. Fantastic. I think we have a special guest waiting. Uh, we can invite him in. If that's okay. Okay, let's do it. Oh, uh, uh, is we've in? got him. We've got Mufti Bilal. Yeah, he is in. Okay, fantastic, guys. He is in. So, uh, I want to uh, kind of introduce Mufti Bilal for you, to you guys before we jump him in. Today is just an introduction with Mufti Bilal. Uh, inshallah, we'll try to see how we can integrate it his uh, knowledge in these uh, uh, daily shows. If you guys want more of him on the shows or you have specific questions, you can put it in the comments below or you can DM us on our uh, social medias and, and stuff like, for example, you can go on to our Telegram channel and say, hey, it was phenomenal having Mufti Bilal on the show, but can we have specific videos of him doing this, this, this? So let us know. We're more than happy to work with that. But yeah, so Mufti Bilal is, a, uh, uh, is our brain when it comes to the Sharia side uh, uh, at Marhaba DeFi and also in general he's, he's a gem to have in our generation today because you know he brings a lot of knowledge from the Sharia side and also the crypto side and also just fintech side which is very important so having all of these three sets of um, pillars of knowledge and putting them together to bring solutions for us is huge so we're, we're very happy and uh, thankful that you're here Mufti Blah. how are you doing how's your day how's the weather down I think you're in UK right Assalamu alaikum everyone, thanks for having me here. Yes, I am based in the UK. I think it's raining, but nothing new here, right? <laughs> UK is used to the rain. So Mufti Bilal, um, just, I know today just a quick introduction about yourself. Um, could you uh, kind of give us a, a quick background about yourself, You know your, your involvement with Marhaba and in general Sharia experts and, and all that? So our viewers know a little bit more about you and, um, you know, they understand the value that you bring, inshallah. Yes, yeah, so I am the director and co-founder of uh, the company called Sharia Experts. It's a company uh, registered in the UK. And uh, along with that, I am also a part of the Sharia board of the Marhaba DeFi And uh, basically, my role really is to ensure that any project that I am working on, whether it's Marhaba DeFi or any other project, is that everything is going according to the Islamic jurisprudence uh, of financial affairs. So at Marhaba, any product that we are developing that is going to be delivered and offered to the customers, 
I have to ensure myself, along with the other members of the Sharia board, Dr. Abdullah and Dr. Farouk, that everything is based according to uh, the Islamic principles uh, related to financial matters. Now, uh, I am a qualified uh, Sharia scholar. Uh, I studied, um, you know, Sharia in a place called Dar al uh which is an Islamic uh, seminary based uh, in the UK, in Bury. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am graduate from there. And I also did my BA in banking and law at uh, London Metropolitan University. And I did also some professional courses in uh, Islamic finance as well. So it is with this background in mind that uh, I was approached by uh, uh, the Marhaba Defy founder, Nakib, uh, initially mm -hmm. to join the team and to set up the first uh, Islamic Defy project in, in the world. Fantastic, mashallah. Okay, so guys, you know, he is a gem. Now, I, I, before I let you go, I know uh, uh, you're also on a busy schedule. Could I know you're working on the Sahal wallet and, and, and the uh, Sharia compliance of some of the tokens. Now, I'm not asking you to talk about the tokens. I'm asking, you, could you give us an update on that? What's going on? Um, you know, which tokens are we kind of looking into? Not actual specific, but something like, are, is it the top 20? Is it the top 100? Or is it a select few uh, that we're looking at? And uh, what's the update on that? Uh, so initially what we did was we looked at the top uh, 20, the, initially at the start we looked at the top 20 uh, biggest, uh, you know, by market size, uh, uh, you know, DeFi tokens. Initially we screened them. Obviously, you know, some of them we found that they were sure compliant and some of them they were not sure compliant. And then uh, mm -hmm. going from that, we started to look at uh, more tokens, specifically from people who would probably know the IFG uh, top 50 crypto list. So mm -hmm. we screened further tokens from this list as well. And uh, now we are in the process of screening the top 20 uh, of stable coins operating in the DeFi ecosystem. So we are at this stage right now. And uh, surprisingly, though, I, I will say that, uh, and I, I think I can say it, is that surprisingly, I would have thought that uh, stable coins would be probably the most straightforward crypto to screen out there. And yeah. probably the yeah. ones that are going to be most likely sure compliant. But it turned out that it, this is not necessarily the case. Uh, so that just tells yeah. you that, that there are a lot of things to learn uh, when it comes to the crypto world. And yeah. this is why, you know, you will have that there are still, I think, I, I haven't read the article and I just saw the link today. I don't know if you guys have heard it. I think there was a fatwa or something like that that was issued in Indonesia against trading mm -hmm. crypto. Yeah, but I think you know this is this is the thing is that there is a, still a lot a lot of misunderstanding around crypto from a Sharia perspective, but also from a trader's perspective. I think there are a lot of people mm -hmm. that are trading in crypto, and I, I uh, there was an article again I read I think in the Financial Times not uh, long uh, not long ago. Um, there was, uh, yes, so in the article they were debating, um, the, the UK authority was debating whether traders actually know about crypto or not. And, the, you know, that they have banned, you know, a platform like Binance from operating uh, in, yeah. in the UK. Yeah. And, you know, they're very kind of iffy and kind of anti-crypto in the UK at the moment from the authority perspective. One of, one of the, mm -hmm. In their report, one of the arguments that they have put forward is that, that they feel that investors do not understand uh, the whole concept 
around crypto and investments in crypto. Yeah. Now, obviously, there are people that argue against that. And they're saying, no, you know, people are actually making money in crypto. So that means, you know, they actually know what's going on. But I kind of have some reservation about it. I think there are a lot of misconception around crypto. And I'm talking about myself yeah. first because, like yeah. I said, I thought something about stable coins, but I realize now that it's not always the case. What I thought is not always the case. But they, I think there's a, the thing about crypto is that there's a lot of changes as well in, in a protocol, right? So today is something and tomorrow yeah. is something else. So, you know, unless you keep updated, you keep yourself updated about these things, then, you know, it'll be very, very difficult to be fully aware of what's going on. Yeah, so and I think it's, also, it's very important so, to have. Yeah, yeah and, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I think that's very important. That's why we have, uh, we have, we have individuals like yourself to help us with clarification on regards to because simply it's very easy to look at crypto and be like, okay, it's not doing anything with gambling. It doesn't look like it's doing anything with interest. But then someone like you can look into the white paper, look into the actual deliverables on that uh, project, and make a judgment from the knowledge set that we won't have right um so fantastic cool um sorry i had cut you off i could finish off sorry about that but no no this is basically what this is what i was going to say is that basically uh you asked me about what stage are we at the moment so this is what we are at the moment in terms of screening mm -hmm. crypto that's what we have been doing in this last fantastic. i mean i think probably since the beginning of the year that's that this is what we have been looking at in terms of uh, cryptocurrencies and crypto assets fantastic okay fantastic alhamdulillah uh jazakallah care for your time uh, uh mufti sahab i really appreciate it i i think from next week on we'll look we'll, we'll integrate you and with like specific topics uh, exactly and for so mm -hmm. I think for now, I'm going to swiftly move on to the updates on to Marhaba. And you were talking about uh, Sahal Wallet. And so I'm going to start off with Sahal Wallet and what's the updates on that. So Sahal Wallet currently is in development. I have seen the uh, actual backgrounds uh, and, and the development and the UX and UI. It looks very phenomenal. I've done a sneak peek already on our Twitter. So if you haven't seen it already, you can go on our Twitter, check out our sneak peek. You'll, you might have to scroll down a little bit. Or you can go on our Telegram and just ask, uh, where's the sneak peek about um uh, this uh sahal wallet and so somebody will send you the pictures um so really exciting stuff happening there plus we got uh, our sharia team who's helping with the screening this is what makes sahal wallet so special that it's a non-custodial wallet so it's like you know having a meta mask and stuff like that so you have your own keys and then at the same time you only see tokens that are permissible and you don't have to do all the work that you do right now like you know go through the reading of the white paper i mean you should still do that to make an investment decision but the whole concept of is a sharia compliant or not you won't have to look into that in such detail anymore because we have that team doing it doing it for you uh the topic of uh, the update of the of the week would really be what's going on with the pre-public sale round two pre-public sale round one we were able to raise one million dollars and uh and pre-public sale round two we're doing the same thing we're raising uh, two million dollars but we had a special feature and special method of how we're going that uh, going about that we are doing from the uh, uh from the ninth till yesterday end of day which was 11th of november we were we had registration open but we had to close it earlier due to many things and one of the reasons being was there's a lot of people jumping onto the website so we had to close it down earlier um and that's the like the official statement you guys can read it on telegram but we will be opening it up again after the 16th if we still have tokens uh, allocation left. So if you did not get a chance to jump onto the dashboard and register, do not do not get scared. Uh, do not worry. Uh, on the 16th of November, we will reopen up the dashboard for people to jump in and uh, register plus buy the tokens. Mind you, if there's still allocation left, and um, you can buy your uh, your allocations then. If you're investing more than five thousand dollars, you can directly email us already. Uh, on uh, business at marhabadefi.com. Uh, you can ask in Telegram which email you want to send it to, or you can read the FAQ document. We'll link all this stuff in the description anyways. Um, and you can direct email us and invest um, through a manual process. And that's only if you're investing more than $5,000. That's the limit. I think those are the main updates for this week. Um, and, I, and it's been a great show as of right now. Thank you both, Moby uh, and, and Mufti Bilal. 
Uh, any last comments from uh, both of you guys? Uh, any last uh, the topics of discussion that you guys want to mention before we wrap this up? I, I just want to quickly sort of say, firstly, Mufti Bhad, thank you so much for making an appearance. I think today was just about introducing you to the community, showing the community like the actual backing that we have, the, you know, the, you know, me, me and Ahmed, you know, we, we don't, we don't know any of this compliance stuff. We rely on people like yourself, you know, Alhamdulillah, people like yourself, um, you know, to, to help us out. And I, the only thing I'll sort of say is guys, if you're listening, you know, obviously we have these resources available. So guys, like we're driven by the community. It's really, really good to see our sort of numbers just skyrocket the last week. But if you guys have questions that we can ask Mufti Blal, please be careful. This is not just a, is this halal? Is this halal? Obviously, this is, we don't want to turn it into that. But if you guys have topics, ideas, suggestions, please shoot them over. And what we really, our plans are really to have a, a dedicated segment um, for Mufti Blal for those, you know, those topics. Um, but again, Mufti Blal, thank you so much, uh, you know, for gracing us with your presence and looking forward to have you, uh, you know, part of the channel a lot more. Yeah, it was my pleasure. Thank you very much. And I really look forward to to take part in this show, inshallah. And I think it's going to be like phenomenal, hopefully. So yeah, look, <laughs> looking forward to it, inshallah. Inshallah. Awesome. All right, I'm going to let guys, you, let you wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, guys, as always, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing? Join the community, join the family. We're all growing crazy. And so uh, if it's growing fast, it's growing crazy amount of time, let's you join it also. Check us out on Telegram, on our other social medias. Um, follow, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Hit the uh, bell notification icon if you're subscribed already so you get that update. And hit the like button for the algorithms because the algorithms love the like button. So just hit that like button if, if you could. That would be phenomenal. As always, thank you so much for your time and, 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 and listening to us and supporting us. Until next time, take care of yourself. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.